Welcome to the latest episode of Five on the Floor and the Five Reasons Sports Network. Thanks for joining us on your favorite podcast app. We're on Red Circle, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, also Spotify, and the Five Reasons YouTube channel. Make sure you hit like, subscribe, and turn the notifications on. Also, check out FiveReasonsSports.com for all your content without a paywall. And check out the great sponsors of the Five Reasons Sports Network. This episode is sponsored by our friend Dr. Jonathan Chung. If you've got back pain, you've got neck pain, he's the guy to go to. He's based in Palm Beach County, but he can see you via telehealth as well. Modern technology, you can do that at an affordable price. Again, he specializes in chronic pain, dizziness, and post-concussion syndrome. He's got a new sports vision training program that is used by athletes like Steph Curry. So reach out to our friend. He's been a big supporter of the network from the very beginning, board-certified chiropractic and chiropractic neurology. Dr. Jonathan Chung, you can find him at chiropractickeystone.com. Again, that's chiropractickeystone.com. And now, today's episode. Down the best gang. Yay. Uh, five on the floor. Ride for my dogs. Where here's the thing. You can check the score. Hustle hard, couple scars, wearing bubble frogs. Just like Buck the Sand, you in trouble, y'all. Kept the floor playing. Got an all band. Y'all seen the block. Stop with one hand. And Pat, we trust. It's power, have the guts. We here to bring the heat. Y'all can hang it up. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a daily insider show on the Miami Heat and the NBA featuring Ethan Skolnick, Greg Sylvander, and Alex Toledo, plus others from the Five Reasons Sports Network. All right, welcome back to Five on the Floor. Here's today's floor plan. I'm Ethan Skolnick. You can follow me at Ethan J. Skolnick and the Five Reasons Sports. I got Greg Sylvander. You can follow him at Greg Sylvander. We continue to get you ready for free agency after the draft. Obviously, the draft is done. Check out our episodes about Jaime Walk. I can't be, be mispronouncing his name, Graham. Jaime Jaquez Jr. There we go. There Jaime go. Jaquez Jr. We're going to go with Triple J. I think that's the way to go, even though there's one of those in Memphis. So check I out called him episodes. Jamie Jaquez my first try. So, like, don't feel so bad, Ethan. Well, uh, we had Precious. A cho- I, there wasn't even a reason to get to know his name. He was gone by the time we got a chance to pronounce it or a chance to spell Dwayne Wade's name. <laughs> so there's been a few through heat history that have been a little bit of difficulty for us. But today we're going to talk Dame, and we're just going to talk about it in this particular context. We're, we're not going to get into this back and forth, these silly little games that are being played. I have a particular opinion on it. I've made it clear. I think this is the KG situation all over again, even though Dame is a little older, which should, which should make this even more imperative for him to try to get out of Portland to give himself the best chance to win not that Portland's not a great city, not that he hasn't had great years there, but again, KG got to one conference final, Dame got to one conference final, KG knew he was not going to get to another conference final in Minnesota, Dame should know he's not going to get to another conference final in Portland, and so the time is right for both parties to separate, it makes sense on both sides, but they're playing this little passive-aggressive chicken game right now, and so we don't know if it's actually going to happen, but the thing is, and Greg, this is what we're focusing on in this episode, And here's the floor plan. You know, even if Dame asks out, there's no guarantee that Portland's going to trade him to Miami. And Barry Jackson, uh, FLA sports buzz, as you know him from the Miami Herald, has done a great job detailing this, that Miami may not necessarily have the assets that Portland wants. We just did a whole asset episode, so make sure you check that out too. And so, Greg, we can't guarantee that, again, even if Dame says, send me to Miami, that Portland's going to do something that's against their own self-interest. And Sean Hyken, who we had on the podcast, who covers the Blazers, and as for the past few years, is very tied in with that front office, has made the case that they're not going to do something just to make Dame happy. But even Sean has sort of backed off a little bit in the past few days from his stance that Dame wouldn't be traded. So what we're going to do today is say, what is the line here? What What is too much to trade for Dame Lillard and then this plays into it too. If you're not going to go past that line, what are the options? So let's start there with the line, Greg. People have said everything but Jimmy and Bam. We went through the assets. So that essentially, if you're going to say everything but Jimmy and Bam, that means you're willing to trade Tyler Hero and Kayla Martin, two of your core pieces at this stage. You're willing to trade the contract of Kyle Lowry, which is, as we've talked about it, at worst at this stage, probably a neutral asset. You're trading perhaps Duncan Robinson, who may be still a negative asset with the contract, but did provide shooting and and solid play for you in the playoffs. 
you may end up trading a couple of your young players, your last two first round picks, Nikola Jovic and Triple J, as I've come to call him. And you may be in, in the business of having to trade future first round picks like 27 and 29. And you may also have to try to free up additional first round picks by basically getting Oklahoma City to budge so that you can trade what would be 24 and 26. What's the line? There is no line. The short answer um, is for Dame in this scenario, you do whatever it takes. This is the all-in moment. This is the Shaq trade all over again. You're holding back your Dwayne Wade pieces. Those are Jimmy and Bam, and everything else has to be included for Dame. This is not a talent of Bradley Beal. This is a different level. This is an elite, elite player. And I just think that you have to go all in. I um, have it on pretty good authority, though, that the list of players that Dame wants in Miami are longer than just Bam and Jimmy. Caleb Martin needs to stay in Miami. So figure it out, um, I think, would be part of that. So I think Caleb would actually end up staying in Miami and they would figure out a way this is where this gets tricky because I ultimately believe that because of the backcourt situation already brewing in Portland with who is now double zero scoot Henderson, uh, which I thought was an interesting number selection by him. Uh, and he well, said it fits it was perfectly first, for marketing. Too, well, he said, cause evil. zero is not available. That's why I'm taking double zero, which I think <laughs> is really funny at this time and, and score. But I think the heat are going to have to go looking around as they, Uh, may or may not have already been doing to see if they can acquire draft picks to for Tyler hero specifically, and maybe some to a team that can absorb him well into or mostly into cap space for draft picks to try to sweeten this up and add more picks to the deal. Um, That's, that's where I think we're kind of heading here, but you give up everything. You even include Caleb if you have to, but I really believe Dame, as he talks to Portland is going to say, can you, can we figure out something if I'm heading to Miami where Bam, Jimmy and Caleb are there and everybody else be damned. Um, And I think Miami would have to live with it. If Caleb did have to go. Well, they were, Miami was not willing to live with it for Beal. um, Cause that was a player that Washington wanted, but again, different circumstance with Dame. I, I feel like, you know, we go back to the Shaq situation. Remember how that played out. You know, Pat had a meeting with Lakers and, he, it was really about them trying to recruit him to go to the Lakers. And then it was kind of like Jerry Buss was like, you know, Shaq's available. And then when that went down the road, Shaq was like, I'll come, but Dwayne has to still be there. And so that those were the two pieces. Eddie Jones remained um, in, in the mix too. Miami had some pieces left. I mean, this is what it kind of comes to. And this is what we talked about with Durant last summer. You have to have something left in the cupboard, but you don't have to have everything, right? You don't have, so. I mean, Jimmy and Bam is where it starts. And then it's kind of like, okay, can you keep one more core rotation piece? And Caleb would be the guy that you would like to keep. I think at this stage, again, nothing against Tyler, but it's cost of contract um, in large degree. And also the type of player that may play well with Dame, which is Caleb's a guy who does not need the ball. And that's, you know, I think when you're looking at a Jimmy and Bam and Dame, you're going to need additional guys, particularly if you don't want Bam to go into a total shell. Uh, you're going to need additional guys who don't need the ball. And Caleb has shown he can do something with it, but he also can play off of it. And and so that's that gives him a lot of value there. Um, there's also the issue of the Max and Gabe contracts, which, uh-huh. you know, does Gabe become more or less valuable if Dame comes in? It would seem like less because you have a starting point guard, but also if you're competing to win now and you have Gabe who can be kind of a, a versatile, uh, you know, one or two, and could he play some with Dame? Uh, we've seen Dame play in smaller backcourts before. So that's another option there. So uh, again, I, I think I'm with you that you this is an all-in moment um, because there is not another one out there at this point. I do not see the next Dame. I mean, Paul George is somebody has been talked about, but I don't see the next Dame on the horizon um, at this stage. I mean, Luca is two, two or three years and a whole bunch of disgruntled uh, or, or you know, early exits or playoff misses, I think, before that becomes a serious conversation. So, you know, we're going through the players and the assets and, and you know, the Heat, obviously, when we've talked about them having picks, we're, we're not, or maybe we are, including Jovic as a pick, including um, Jaime Jaquez as a pick. 
I hope I said that name right this time. Uh, and now we're kind of, I think Heat fans have started to lean in there that maybe those are the low the low cost pieces that hang around. Well, then you're you're severely lacking picks if if you're looking forward. And um, so I the the interesting thing for me here though is that we've gone through all these assets and we've talked about the picks and the players and I've said that there is no line right that you 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 go all in. The line that I have is it comes from a different place. So I do have a line. I don't know. Do you want, do you want to go after the break? I Yeah. I let's, can... let, let, let's, let's do it after the break because I really, I really have no line in this case. And, and that's uh, for me, that's different because I'm usually the, Oh, I'd really like to keep this guy and keep that guy. And I've said that when it was for Harden or for others, I just think that, and we'll get to, to your point here right after the break. I just think Dame is such a perfect fit. Like I, I really could not go out there and find a player who would fit with Jimmy and Bam better. The player does not exist. the The idea too that he's too old at thirty two, turning thirty three, when he just had one of uh, you know one of the top three scoring seasons for a player that age ever, um, is over the injuries, has that kind of uh, killer mentality that is needed with Jimmy has had enormous playoff moments in the past. Uh, although I know there's some questions about some of it and we can talk about it if Dame is ever required, but it it is just, it's a perfect fit. And the friendship also with Bam and the mutual respect with Jimmy, this is to me the most perfect fitting big three since the Boston big three that came together and won the 2008 title. And that team, that big three came together. And if you look at where the, those pieces fit with Garnett and Pierce uh, and Allen, Rondo was already there. But if you just look at the way those three pieces fit, these pieces fit equally well. Um, Garnett was defensive anchor um, in the same way that Bam is. Obviously, Garnett at that point was more accomplished offensively, older, uh, et cetera. But again, defensively, he was your anchor on the interior you, then you had, you know, Pierce and Jimmy. We can make jokes about Paul Pierce, but the guy was, you know, he had moments over the course of his career. He is a Hall of Famer for whatever we think of Paul Pierce. And Ray Allen and Dame DeLillard, you talk about big shot making uh, at, at that stage of, of Ray's career, which was not uh, Milwaukee Ray, was not Seattle Ray, but he also wasn't Miami Ray. He was but still the, volume scorer Ray. Vo- volume scorer capable of doing other things. It, it is it is a a perfect fit in a way that that I know people are going to question. Well, what about the Heat's big three? LeBron and Dwayne was not a perfect fit. Yes, defensively they were, uh, but offensively we knew it was going to be muddled for a little while, and it was. And um, and and you know Chris provided the the outlet option, the relief option, but when Chris came, he was not a great defender at the level of Garnett and Bam. He became that. Um, so I just think. It's an ideal fit. It is the one that you empty the chamber for, so to speak. I just we will get to Greg here on maybe what the other option might be. We do want to mention a couple more great sponsors of the Five Reasons Sports Network as we go forward here. Our friends over at You Break Wheel Fix. Check them out at YouBreakWheelFix.com. That's YouBreakWheelFix.com. Or in North Miami and Aventura, um, they are the complete wheel solution. Our friend Mark and all, they, all these all these great people that were at our last watch party, huge Miami Heat fans, Canes fans, Dolphin fans, all that good stuff. Based in the Aventura area, complete wheel solution. They can do the repairs for you, also the refinishing, and then also they can just make them look real nice. You want the heat colors, any kind of heat colors, they can do it for you. So check them out at youbreakwheelfix.com. That's youbreakwheelfix.com, or just visit them in North Miami, again, in the Aventura area. We know curb rash, all these other things that happen here in South Florida. Have them clean them up for you, 305 305- Seven four eight zero one one two. That's three zero five seven four eight zero one one two. We also mentioned, as always, our betting partner is Better Edge. That's with an O. BetterEdge.com. You're betting against others who use it instead of bookies or the book or anything like that. That's why it's legal in forty four states, including the state of Florida. Check them out at BetterEdge.com. Use the code five RSN and Prize Picks, our fantasy partner. Use that code five F I V E to get that initial deposit matched up to. A hundred dollars at prize picks. All right, Greg, what is your other solution here? It's not really a solution. It's when you talk about like, where's my line with this Dame situation? There is a timing element that matters to me now that didn't matter before. 
like last summer, we were like, we're going to wait to the bitter end for this. And I think probably the Heat Org will ultimately wait to the bitter end of the Dame situation to see itself out. But I'll just say this. When I see what Jimmy Butler does in these postseasons and when I see what Bam Adebayo does defensively in these postseasons, go back and watch those damn games and just watch Bam on defense and see what they have. When you see Eric Spolstra put on the master classes that he does, my line is falling back and resting on your laurels of saying that those three guys are going to be great for us no matter what. So even if we do nothing throughout this, if we let Gabe and Max walk and bring back, you know, basically a just less expensive version of last year's team, if that's where this is going to head, off of the heels of going after Dame, that's going to be a really tough pill for the for for that for fans to swallow. And so I think ultimately what I'm looking for, and we've talked about like we're looking for the Antoine Walker, James Posey, Jay Will trade. They don't need the Shaq trade. The Dame is the Shaq trade in this era. Okay. So that's we're saying I don't I don't even necessarily need them to go as crazy as to flip the entire roster upside down. Gabe and Max are the decisions that need to be made. If both of them walk out the door at crazy amounts, let's say Gabe gets 18 million per. I understand if the heat can't swallow that. I get it. If Max gets 16 million per, I understand if they can't keep them, but what else are you going to do? I just, I, it will not sit well with me to see Jimmy Bam and Spo do what they do. They're 16 game folks all the time, 16 game players and coaches. They need to be supplemented with more talent. You have to do something. So that's just the the, the point for me. And if Dame is going to put them in a position where they come back with just a shell of last year's team with some other veteran minimum players added around them, at least flip Kyle Lowry for some talent that is maybe on an extra year at a lower number to reduce payroll. Let's get creative. We don't need to go through the scenarios tonight. I just can't do that in good conscience. Look how good they are in the playoffs, Ethan. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Where it's like, I I, I do. The the problem is when is the, when is the drop dead point and, and who controls it? Right. And so you have to have other things running here. But, you know, we know that Dame can't be traded till July 9th. Now, it can be consummated prior. Um, and there could obviously be a lot of information that's shared right. prior. And, and there's been be some free. question marks whether that July 9th date is actually um, correct. Actually, right. like that was stirring on the Internet today as we record this on the 24th. Right. And that's something we will dive, dive into a little bit more. But I, I would oh, the overall point is. You know, there other players are going to move, and not yeah. just in free agency, but in the trade market. And so you take a look at. I mean, I don't think they're getting like Sarah, again. Jeremy Grant's in Portland, so he's a bad example, perhaps. But I don't think they're getting Jeremy Grant for what we're. He's it's talking about him getting paid anyway. But I'm just saying there are players of that ilk who may get moved at this stage who would make a major difference for this Heat team. Yeah, and yeah. you can't be at the point where you've just waited out the whole thing and. I'll just, to me, and and we we have our sponsors, not of this particular episode, but a closure investigative agency uh, that we sponsors our spy report. And I'll just say this: they better hire a good private investigative firm or something to know exactly where this thing is headed. Like I know you can't know a hundred percent, but you got to have a pretty damn good idea. Okay, their reconnaissance on this has got to be fantastic. All right, they 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 have to have staked out Dame's viewpoint on this one way or another through their own players or whatever, because you cannot get caught holding the bag here. And all these other players, I mean, we've already seen Boston's improved and they passed uh, on Beal. Beal. Well, you don't think Boston's improved, but they've changed. Okay. So we'll see. They've, they've uh, taken a swing. That's what taken, I'm talking they take, about. They, they, they've taken a swing Milwaukee. We don't know yet what's going to happen with Middleton um, and what they're going to look like. I mean, the reality is, you know, it does seem like the balance of power is swinging back west again. And, you know, that's it didn't last very long. You know, we talk about the East and it's usually like half a season that we're like, oh, it's back. You know, the East is back. And then it's not. I mean, you look at it already. Beal's gone out west. Denver, even if they lose Bruce Brown, they made some trades to at least try to fortify their depth. They're going to be really good. Nobody at top of the West has really lost anybody of significance. Memphis, when Ja comes back, 
should be a better team because they need an adult in the room like Marcus Smart. So I actually that trade is going to help. I like Tyus Jones a lot, but Marcus Smart gives them – that will be big for them, I think, in terms of holding people accountable because the talent is in that room already. And so you look at the West right now and you're like, okay, you've got Utah – OKC, young teams accumulated a lot of picks. They're going to be coming up here soon. And active. And and active. (laughs) And I just think, you know, the East, I don't know. I mean, nobody's done anything to impress me so far. I mean, Atlanta, no. Toronto, I mean, we'll see what Masai does, but it's just as as likely he can go backwards as forward. Chicago hasn't done anything yet. But this gets back to to the point um, again. If you wait and you're holding the bag on Beal and then Zach Levine moves teams and then you look at it and you're holding like, Holding the bag on Beal, you mean holding the bag on Beal? Oh, well, they, held, no, they didn't hold the bag on Beal, I guess. They hold the bag on Dame. Blade, I'm sorry, I know, stuck but... back in there. But if you're, you're holding it on Dame, and, which, I again, I feel he's worth the assets. The question is, is he worth the time if he's not serious about leaving and Portland's not serious about trading him to you? Correct. And that's how you have to know – or have a pretty good idea because then if you got like, let's say Zach Levine ends up with another East contender that sucks. And you had an opportunity to get him. What if Zach Levine somehow, and I don't know how it all works, but ends up in Milwaukee, Um, you know, which, you know, Chris Middleton's flipped somewhere else and they, in a sign and trade scenario. Well, I mean, Philadelphia you know, makes a move. You're right. Like, right. You, you, any you, permutation of it. Yeah. So far it's like, okay, I, I'm, you know, the Knicks haven't done anything yet, but could they, Okay. So I, I'm just looking at it and I'm saying right now the East is kind of held tight. Um, there was nothing in the in the draft that really changed the dynamic. I don't know that there's going to be anything in free agency. And so I don't really feel like the Heat are, are threatened at this point. Significantly, it's crazy to say as an eight seed, but again, we don't look at them as an eight seed. And they did just go to the finals. So but- we shouldn't look at them as an eight seed. But, but they can't be left, like I said, they can't be left holding too long on a guy who's not serious about coming to them. And I think that's that's where Heat fans are freaked out because I don't think they trust the organization to know right now. And some of it is very unknowable, but they've got to know as much as they possibly can. And then point uh, you make here in the chat and then lose Gab and Max in the process and get worse. Right. And that's, and then it, it's going to look, it's going to look like, okay. And I'm not saying this is the case. If they wait on Dame and either Dame or Portland was not serious about an eventual move where he goes to the heat and the heat don't get anybody. And like you said, they lose Gabe and Max and the payroll shrinks. The heat fan is going to perceive that as they just played this game and went through the motion so that they could save ownership some money. That's how it's going to look. It may not be the way they're going into this. Okay. Because I do believe they are serious about trying to get Dame Lillard. And I do believe that they are, no, they, they are going to pay tax, even if they don't want to pay a second apron, but the perception you see it You're on so right. Twitter and other places is going to be, they just played this game because they really didn't want to spend any money and that may end up being unfair, but you better use that Lowry Lowry expiring. I think a big old expiring contract can bring back a talented player that has years left on their deal. Go get, go get a play, go get your Aaron Gordon, the way the Denver nuggets went and got a guy two years ago that fortified them. Uh, I, I think that they just, at some point they have to acknowledge the greatness of Jimmy Bam and Spo and get them some help. Well, they're going after the guy they should go after right now. I, I, I believe that this is the right guy. It's just how long do you hold it and how much information do you have? And look, there are other players who are going to free up who can help them. You know, you even look at Washington's situation now, Monte Morris, other, there are guys who can fill gaps for them. Yep. Who may become available in smaller deals, but they got to have different tracks and they usually do. They have different tracks. There's the plan after the plan after the plan, but it has to be okay. There has to be a certain level of knowledge here. And you don't want, again, you don't want the perception that you didn't want to spend money and you don't want the perception that everybody knows more than you did. And I go back to 2014 and this is a bad memory for heat fans, but I keep saying this. I, until that point, completely trusted the organization to have all of the knowledge and information that it it could possibly have. 
And then as that process was going on and I was talking to highest level, I'm talking highest level people in the organization and we're saying LeBron's coming back. And every player I spoke to on that team said, he's been gone for months. I mean, I told this story before. I was li literally, I was literally, my daughter was going to be born in the next couple of weeks. And I got a text from Mike Miller, who I used to speak to quite a bit. And he's like, you moving to Cleveland? And I'm like, and this was like three or four days in the process. This is well before the 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 Lee Jenkins thing or anything like that. Oh my god! To that to that point, I thought the LeBron was coming back because the highest level of the Heat's organization was telling me that they had nothing to worry about, and LeBron was coming back. And I had Mike and other guys saying this thing's been done for a while. Okay, you don't want to look like you got blindsided again. So that they and and this isn't and with LeBron that was your own player. So you you. It was easier to have knowledge on that, right? Hopefully. This is a guy that you've never <laughs> he's never been inside your building, right? Yeah. They better have a pretty damn good idea. Because I think they're doing the right thing. I do. I want to be clear on that. Agree. I agree. I want to be clear. They're doing the too. right thing. This is the guy to go for. But they 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 better have a sense. They can't have yeah. surety, but they better have a sense. And if not, pivot fast. That yes. like that is a huge part. Well, of they've this. done that before. I just they have. I know they have. longer here. But I mean, when Dwayne left, which was a disaster in 2016, and never should have happened. But you remember the next day, they literally signed five guys and made a, made a small trade for Luke Babbitt. They had it lined up, okay. And we can joke about the Dion Waiters and JJ and James Johnson, all that. But the reality is those were good deals the first year. The Dion deal, the $2.7 yeah. million dollars on one year was an excellent deal. The James Johnson deal, the Olenek deal was a good deal, okay? Fans I'm just not, want a plan. It, right. They had a plan, and it was after that, the year after, that they kind of screwed it up. But, you know, with by overpaying some guys that they didn't need to. But they had a plan, so I'm going to trust, just like when they went after Elton Brand, they had a plan to go get Lamar Odom. I'm going to trust, to a certain degree, but I've been burned trusting before. And I think they thought also last year that PJ was going to come back even with all this, the circumstances. And again, there were choices that needed to be made there and PJ and Caleb both wanted their money. And so I'm, I don't, you know, and, they, and he made the right decision there ultimately, but I'm just saying, sometimes you think certain things will play out a certain way. You better have as much knowledge as you possibly can. That's it. Cause we don't know what the hell Dame's going to do. We don't know what Portland's going to do. We fans are asking us, the organization needs to know more than we do. So that's where we're at. Thanks to our sponsors, You Break Wheel Fix, Keystone Chiropractic. Check out all of the other episodes. We don't know when this one's posting, but we're going to have another episode on the cap itself with Brian Goins from Miami Heat Beat coming up. Lots of content here on Five on the Floor. Have a good night. Thank you for listening to the Five on the Floor on the Five Regional Sports Network.